everybody in the congregation, the virtual congregation, amen. Just join with me and just put your hands together, amen, and just give God praise, amen. I could work out to that, amen. That's got me feeling good this morning. We just give God praise for who God is and for Brother Chris Crane, our director of music and fine arts here at Calvary Baptist Church in the city of Milwaukee. For those of you I have not spoken to since this new year, happy, blessed, prosperous, healthy new year. Amen, amen. We find ourselves now uh, celebrating Epiphany, Epiphany. We're celebrating that today, and we're going to be looking at the scripture from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 12. And I'm going to be preaching from the subject, it did not happen to me, it happened for me. It did not happen to me, it happened for me. Let's look to God in prayer. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen, amen. From Matthew 2, 1 through 12, we find these words in the New International Version. This is the visit of the Magi. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Now I want to repeat verse 12 again in our hearing and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they return to their country by another route. I want to preach as God shall guide from the subject, it did not happen to me, it happened for me. This, my sisters and brothers, is a familiar story because today is epiphany. We are now in the epiphany season of the church. And because it is the season of epiphany, we read this passage. It is the manifestation of Christ as represented by the Magi. It is the clash of kingdoms, Herod's or Christ. And this is why Herod was troubled. I want to say to you that many people are troubled because they have not decided whose viewpoint of their life they will believe. What do I mean? This is what I mean. Notice that after the Magi presented the three types of gifts to the Christ child, they were warned in a dream not to return the way they had come, and they, quote, returned to their country by another route. What does this have to do with me, you say? Everything and then some, I would respond to you. Herod represents evil. Christ, of course, is the light shining on that evil. Darkness cannot stand the light. That's simple enough for even a baby to understand. But 
what I really want to point out in this message is your future and my own. The future that is ours right now in Jesus Christ. We may have trouble understanding our future, not because we don't have faith in God, but because we have not understood our past in helpful ways. I want to say that again. We may have trouble understanding our future, not because we don't have faith in God, but because we have not understood our past in helpful ways. Our mission here at Calvary, as you know, is the Great Commission, right out of Matthew 28. And our vision, that comes out of the book of Genesis, that is the story of Joseph. It is not just, it is not first for the people that we will reach with the message of Christ, it is for all of us first. Those of us who are members of Calvary, those of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, is for us first. For example, in an airplane emergency, the adult is supposed to help the child, not the other way around. The well is supposed to help the unwell, not the other way around. The way we view our past is going to be the way we view our future. Let me say that again. The way we view our past is going to be the way we view our future. The Magi went back to their country by another route because they had been warned in a dream. Epiphany, which is defined as a moment of sudden revelation or insight, is an opportunity. I said it's an opportunity. Do you hear me? It's a new year, y'all. It's an opportunity for us to travel a different road. It's an, it is an opportunity for us to interpret even the unpleasant aspects of our lives, and we all have them, not as happening to us, but happening for us. It is an opportunity to tell God's truth to ourselves about ourselves, because strong and stable futures cannot be sustained on fairy tales. It is an opportunity to travel a different road, to return to the present and go into the future in a new way. I offer you this message on this epiphany season as the Magi brought themselves, brought gifts, received revelation, and returned home safely another way. Our lives, my sisters and brothers, are what we make of them. God has given us free choice. He has given us all we need to live the best life he has ordained us to live. It is up to us. I hope you hear me out there today. It is up to us, not our parents, not our spouses, not our children, not our friends, not anybody else. It is up to us to live God's best lives for ourselves. Read God's word. If you want to know how to live, if you want to know how to uh, interpret your past uh, in a better way, in a new way, I'm not just talking about something superficial. I'm talking about interpreting your past. I'm talking about going back with the Holy Spirit into your childhood and saying, Holy Spirit, interpret for me. And how is this accomplished? This is accomplished by reading God's word because the Holy Spirit, he is the one who inspired men to write the Bible. And so naturally, he is the one who is be, going to be able to give us understanding as we read the word. So read God's word because the word informs prayer. Sometimes people try to pray. We all pray sometimes, you know, but we need to let the word of God inform our prayer because some, sometimes we can sometimes pray if we're not careful things that the word does not lift up, things that the word of God does not support. That's why it's so important for us to read the word and not just to superficially read it, but to stay in it, to, to, to develop a plan for reading passages of scripture and seeking God's face through his word. So, so how can you live this new life that I've been talking about? How can you take advantage of epiphany? How can you take advantage of the life that you have 
for the rest of your life? How can you take advantage of the rest of the time that God has given you? You can take advantage of it by looking back, but you don't look back just by yourself. You say, Holy Spirit, help me to look back and make sense of the painful things and the unfortunate things, the times where I was embarrassed, the times I could try to control circumstances because I was so afraid of failure. Whatever it is, we all have different paths, but 2021 is another opportunity, yet another year that God has given us. And we want to make the most of this year. And the way we make the most of this year is holding on to God, reading his word, staying in his word, then praying because the word informs prayer. If you really want to see a change in your life, pray like the woman in Luke 18, 1 through 8, that woman who would not give up. If something, if you want a new way of living, you got to want it bad enough to pray for it. Is there somebody on my street that can say, if you're miserable and you're sick and tired of being miserable and you know that there is more for you, you are going to make the time to be with God and read his word in 2021 and pray and seek his face like you never have before. Now, if you're just talking about wanting another life, you're not going to pray. If you're just talking about having another life, you ain't going to be in the word. But if you're really serious and you're seeking God and you're saying, God, I know that there is more. I know that God has more for me. I know, I know, I know. If you are convinced of that, you got to be convinced yourself. If you are convinced of that, just me preaching to you ain't going to convince you. But if you go and you say, you know what? I believe, I believe that I'm still alive because God has a purpose for me. I believe that God does not want me walking around depressed and oppressed. God does not want me walking around acting like things are just happening to me. God, want, God says I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me. And so if you believe that, and you're serious about that, you will pray, and you need to look it up. I don't have time to go there, but you need to look up Luke 18, one through eight, the parable of the unjust judge and this woman who would not give up. Then part of, part of not giving up, part of having the best year of your life that you have had up to this point, no matter how old you are, don't believe the devil's lies. If God has you still alive, God still has a plan for your life here on planet Earth. I know that we are heavenly citizens and earthly citizens at the same time. I know that those of us who are saved, we are already, we are living in the kingdom of God, etc. But God has a plan for you right now. So if you really want to live that life, get the help you need. Nobody died for you but Jesus. So when it comes to people giving you advice, etc., first of all, submit yourself to Christ. Come under Christ. If you've never received him as your Lord and Savior, John 3:16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus Christ, let him be the driver of your life. Let him be the one that you get your advice from. You let him be your best friend. Nobody died for you but him. Let Jesus lead you as you come into your future, not walking down the road of this happened to me and that happened to me. And I'm not trying to, I, all painful things have happened to all of us. But now, instead of walking down that road as a victim, you are walking up the road as a victor. You are walking up the road to your future. You are going back a different way. You remember the Magi, when they received that revelation, they did not go back and see Herod, but they went to their country, the Bible says, another way. Is there somebody today that's willing? There's somebody today that wants to go back. You want to go to your future. You're not going back, but what you're going to, you're going to your present and you're going to your future with 
the illustrations that God has given you about your future, the imagination, the heavenly imagination, the strength to, to, to imagine a better future, a different future. You are walking up the king's highway and you're not saying this happened to me, that happened to me. You're saying it happened for me. And if you need some scriptural backup, I invite you to just turn in your Bible right to Romans 8 and 28, where it says that we are more than conquerors and this is why we need to stay in the word. This is why we need to read the word because we can be so, so much on social media and social media, I know that God is on social media, God is on the internet, etc. but we need to spend time with God alone and praying and seeking his face and being in his word. Romans 8 and 28 tells us who we are. It tells us that we are more than conquerors. I'm almost done now, but it says this, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Now hear this, what then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is it that condemns? Christ Jesus who dies. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we face death all day long we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered no in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us finally for i am convinced and this is what you got to be convinced of my sisters and brothers that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. My sisters and my brothers, it's 2021 and it is time for us to walk as conquerors in the name of Jesus this year. If you've never done it before, get used to saying, I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. And you can go back with the Holy Spirit in your life and say, Holy Spirit, this hurt me so bad. And over time, the Holy Spirit, he can help you to translate that. He can help you to reframe the pain. That's one good thing. I just want to let somebody know the Holy Spirit can help you to reframe the pain. Help me, Holy Spirit, because as I look in the newspaper, uh, there's so many folk uh, that are killing themselves. Uh, there's so many folk uh, that have mental illness, uh, and mental illness is real. Uh, the spirit of oppression is real, uh, and things that are going on today uh, are taking lives. Uh, but I stopped by today uh, to encourage somebody uh, to tell you uh, that you can make it. Uh, you don't have to believe uh, the devil's lies. Uh, you are uh, a child of God. Uh, you are uh, a child uh, of the Most High King. Uh, and you have power. Uh, because when you receive Christ, uh, he gave you power uh, down on the inside. Uh, that power uh, is the Holy Ghost. Uh, I'm glad today uh, that I can preach this uh, because through my life, uh, I've had some pain. Uh, I've had some cloudy days, uh, but with a lot of help, uh, with prayer, 
uh, with scripture, uh, with saints gathered around me, uh, and may I say, uh, with a good wife uh, and a loving family, uh, now I can say, uh, it didn't happen to me, uh, but it happened for me. Uh, some of that stuff uh, that was so painful, uh, some of that stuff uh, that was so embarrassing, uh, made me a better husband today. Uh, made me a better father today, uh, made me a better preacher today, uh, made me a better pastor today. Uh, is there somebody uh, you can testify uh, that the pain uh, that you had in your life uh, wasn't wasted, uh, but God uh, turned it around? Uh, say yes. Uh, won't he do it? Uh, yes, he will. Uh, he'll turn uh, your pain uh, into gain. Uh, give him glory. Uh, give him praise. Uh, say hallelujah. Because uh, he's worthy. Yes, he is. He's worthy of all the praise. I want to pray with you. Our Father and our God, we just thank you, thank you, thank you for new life. We thank you for this new year. I pray in the name of Jesus that everyone who is hearing that desires to be set free from bondage of the past, that you do it right now in the name of Jesus. We glorify you, God. We praise you in the name of Jesus. If there's somebody here today listening that does not know you, Lord, I said it in the, in the sermon, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Allow them to know that they can receive you right now, even right now, and you will truly come into their heart. Lord, we love you and we thank you. We dedicate this year to you, seeking your face more and more. We praise you. We thank you in advance for 2021. We claim the victory in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I leave, now we're just going to enjoy some Brother Chris Crane as he's going to play us out. Amen. Amen.